hello welcome back welcome to a video all about my lovely new power chair um i called her wilma she is wilma the will see too i know there are a lot of people who are very interested in this power chair and back when i was researching what would be the best option for my new power chair i found it really helpful not just to have all the info you can find online but to actually hear about other people's lived experiences and see them using it I watched a video about six months ago from a girl called Stella who did a video similar to this and this has been requested by quite a few people so I thought I'll take you out, I'll show you a bit about the wheelchair, what's working for me, what's really not working for me quite yet um, and just talk you through not just the pros but also the cons because of course it's one thing this wheelchair being suitable for me um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's suitable for everybody, we are all gloriously unique and as I always say I'm just one ambulatory wheelchair user. I don't represent every disabled person, but if you are considering new power chair options and this is one of the options on your list, I hope you'll find this helpful. It also goes without saying, but I feel enormously lucky and privileged to have this wheelchair. Um, it's really hard to access mobility aids in the UK, even for people who need them the most. And it isn't lost on me that I'm in a privileged position to be able to have this wheelchair now. Um, access to wheelchair services desperately needs improvement so if you're navigating that system at the moment or you're trying to problem solve or find options that work for you um, you have all of my empathy and my heart really does go out to you um, because I know the system needs a lot of improvement. If we haven't met before um, to briefly introduce myself my name is Pippa I'm a disabled person who lives in York I work as a writer a blogger comms consultant and I've been a wheelchair user for a fairly long time now, but my first power chair I got back in 2018. If you have any initial questions about why I use a power chair and how I use a power chair with a chronic illness, um, there's another video on my channel called Using Mobility Aids with ME slash CFS, which is the condition that affects me the most. Um, in that video, I answer a lot of the most frequently asked questions. And then if you're wondering what made me choose the Will C2 specifically, um, I have a whole other video on that as well. Um, I think that's called how I chose my new power chair and that goes into the different options I considered, how I researched, the demo days, and it talked a bit about the funding and acquiring the chair as well and how I got some funding towards this chair through access to work. But yes, all of that has led me to here. Okay, we have made it to Roundtree Park. I'm just waiting for my friend slash support worker Rhiannon. Um, I was going to wear shorts today and I'm very glad I didn't. I severely misjudged the weather, so you're going to have to excuse the fact I've got all kinds of layers, got a very funky outfit going on right now. So this is Wilma, the Will C2. I'm going to show you around a little bit. Um, just again, if you've never seen any of my videos before, I will say here I'm an ambulatory wheelchair user. I have some ability to walk and stand, so you're not about to witness a miracle when I do this. Wow! Oh, um, okay, so I think we'll start from the bottom. So down here we have the Omni wheels. Now these are very big and chunky compared to the chair I had previously. They can climb curbs up to five centimetres in height and they can handle terrain that's a bit more uneven, which is especially handy given that the city I live in is full of cobbles and uneven surfaces. These have already made a really big difference to how I use the wheelchair day to day and it seems like it's a lot more up to the task of keeping up with my way of life as it is today. If the angle's changing a bit it's because we are in a public place, there are people walking past and I keep getting awkward but it's all good. So we've talked about the wheels, um, the foot plate is lovely and big and that might sound like a really minor thing but there's loads of room to just put your feet comfortably which means you can sit in a position that's a bit more comfortable for you which is something I found really helpful. And then a lovely big storage basket. I get far too excited about this because look at all the room for storage. It's brilliant. You can actually get quite a lot under there, which is so handy, especially when you're trying to carry loads of luggage at the same time. Um, at the minute, I just carry around my battery charger, which is like teeny tiny. It fits in here. Um, the battery life is pretty good. Um, I can't remember how good, so I will tell you that later. Um, but it's a force of habit for me to carry the battery around because the battery on my old one was problematic at best. So I would always carry this in case of emergencies. Um, and then the other thing I have under here at the minute is my lovely bundle bean. I won't go on about this today, but it's essentially a wheelchair cosy and it's life changing. Um, and I do have a discount code for these, so I will link that below as well. <laughs> so in terms of the seat, it's lovely and comfy. One of my worries about this particular chair is that the backrest is still quite low. I ideally, I wanted something that might come a little bit higher um, just for posture and comfort. 
Um, but I have been told since purchasing this chair that if you need to, you can change the back of this chair to something called a J-rest, which comes up a bit higher. Um, I have considered that, but I'm going to see how I get on with this one first, because the way that it is, it is a lot more portable. Um, so I'm going to see how I go before I think about that any further. We have the lovely arm rests. Um, I, on my old chair, I've not got into the habit of doing this yet. On my old chair with the armrest, you would just lift them up like this. On this one, you have a little clip here and you have to unclip that first and then it lifts up. So if you wanted to transfer that way, you can. These colour panels are something you can change. They do a few different colours and you can just pop them in and out yourself. Um, the ones that were available in the UK when I got this chair, they were lovely and they look great on other people, but I didn't really love any of them myself. So I ended up getting this one, which is ice white. Um, they do do other colours, but they're only available in Europe, which I only found out after I fell in love with one that I couldn't have, obviously. Um, but working in the disability sector does have some perks. So I knew a person who knew another person and the colour panels that I wanted are now on the way. And if I've understood the situation correctly, they are going to be stocked in the UK. So I'll keep you updated with that one. I've got another colour, colour panel coming, which I'm so happy about. And then if you come a bit closer, um, I will just show you the, um, the control panel. I don't even know if that's called, if that's what it's called. Why can't I talk today? Um, it will show you how much battery you've got left. Um, there are four different speeds. Um, like most power chairs, it goes at a maximum of four miles an hour, I believe. And then the joystick, um, I thought was going to take me a while to get used to because it's a very different shape to the one I had before, but it's actually lovely and comfy and ergonomic. Um, so it's nice and easy to use. Wow, it's windy. Oh! Now, there's a very threatening horn. I don't want to take anybody by alarm, but you're all going to have to brace yourselves for this. You know, in case of an emergency and you need to let someone know you're there. Right, everybody ready? That's the horn. <laughs> I do question how much good that's going to do in an emergency situation, but you know, it's there, so there's that. <laughs> I didn't mention as well, the seat size comes in three different sizes. I believe it's 16 inch, 18 inch and 21 inch. Um, this is the 16. It's a little bit wider than the chair I had previously, so um, that's taken a bit of adapting as well, but that's a me problem, it's not the chair problem. This can fit into a car, um, that was one of the essentials for me. So this power chair comes into four separate pieces and you can lift each piece into the car individually. Um, the seat folds down and comes off, the big basket comes out and then the wheels separate into two different parts, um, so you can lift them in. Um, I would say that unless you've got a very strong person in your family, it probably needs two people to lift each piece in. And I am actively exploring some other options in terms of getting it in and out of the car, but um, I'll keep you updated with that as it happens. I'll show you the battery. You stay there. I'll turn around and I'll show you the battery. Ta-da! So on the previous chair, the battery was the bane of my life. It was actually horrendous. It was so heavy. And because it was really hard for me to pick it up and lift it out, and because I can't store my power chair in my house, so I can't plug it directly into a plug socket. I was having to lift it and carry it. And that was actively limiting the number of times I could leave the house because I wouldn't be well enough to do the battery on the same day. And sometimes I wouldn't be well enough to charge the battery up if I wanted to go out and like it gave me post-exertional malaise and it was a nightmare. So this battery, while it's not as light as a feather, it is a million times better than the one I had before. I believe it weighs 2.4 kilograms and all you do to get it out, I forgot to mention the seatbelt again. There is a seatbelt if you need it. There's probably a better way to do something with it than what I've done. But the battery, all you do is push the button and it lifts out like that. Jobs are good in. And then you just shove it back in. Oh. <laughs> I normally do a better job of it than that. We'll pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> There's also two um, reflective lights. Um, you don't have to turn them on and off. When it's dark, these come on, which is obviously great if you are traveling in the dark and you're worried about visibility. There's the, um you can tell I'm really good with all the technical terms, but there's the back wheels. Um, it can handle quite um, a decent ramp. Um, I think I need to be humbled a bit because I'm getting carried away with it, but if you live in York, the best point of reference I have for you is that it can get up the ramp to Pizza Express in town, which is no small feat. If it can get up that ramp to Pizza Express, then there can't be a lot that it can't do. Oh! 
that's a proper teddy bear. So the battery, when it's fully charged up, has a driving range of about 18 kilometers and the battery takes about five hours to charge fully up. So it's not bad at all. It's very man manageable actually. And then I think we'll talk about accessories, which is the fun bit. So all of the accessories I'm going to show you today, I got them at the same time as I got the power chair. So this power chair was provided by TGA and um, TGA ordered the accessories and they brought them with them when they brought the power chair. So they fitted everything on for me, which is great because I've got no skills in that department. And I will write the full names and product codes below because I've had a lot of questions about the bags in particular. So I'll write all of that in the description box. Um, what shall I show you first? Let's start at the top and work our way down. So I'm going to turn around again. Woohoo! This bag fits on the back of the power chair. I believe it's called the Splash Scooter Bag. And can you believe this bag wasn't designed specifically for this chair? Like, look how well this fits. So the bag is something separate. This is the back of the Will C2. And all you do is, um, there's like a thing to slide it over here. and it just fits on like that. So it's lovely, it's nice and comfy to lean against and you can get quite a lot in here. Um, oh, I won't show you that at the minute. I've got um, a bath mat that I need to return to home bargains, but normally there's more exciting things in here. But yeah, that's really good for if you have to carry extra layers and stuff like that. This um, bag I've had a lot of questions about. This is the Able To Pannier bag and it just slides over the arm of your power chair or wheelchair. Again, it's not designed specifically for this chair, but it fits really nicely. And you can get quite a lot in it. So there's the big Velcro section here. And then on the inside, there's just a little zip section as well for your valuables. Um, this is great because it means that I don't have to take a handbag every time I come out, which is so nice because you're not having to juggle all this extra stuff on you. It's taken a bit of getting used to not having a handbag on my lap. I keep forgetting, I keep thinking that I've forgotten something. But yeah, these are really great. Um, I actually got two of these, but as of now, I've only really felt like I needed to use one of them at once. Um, that might change in the future, you never know. Um, I have customised it a little bit. I can't decide whether this is cute or cringe, but these are the badges from my book launch. I thought I'd put them on because if you can't be a walking billboard for your own book, when can you be? But I don't know. I'm still, I'm still torn. I don't know if it's cringe or not. I go back and forth on a daily basis, so we'll see. Um, and I will say as well, I think I'm going to look at some other ways to secure this down because at the minute it's Velcro um, and I feel like I'd like it to be a bit more secure. So I'm looking into options for that at the minute. The cup holder down here is from a brand called Quokka, which is a very cute brand name. Um, it just clips on and off. I'm not going to do it today, but you can just clip it on and off using the little switch here. If you have a Chili's water bottle or any of the ones like this, this actually fits in perfectly. I do have the newer Chili's one, but that doesn't quite fit in as well. So that just slots into there and that's very handy. Um, like a lot of people, I do have to drink a lot of water for my condition management and it's so good just to have it there and it's really easy to just whack it in and out as needed. And then on this side, we have... Now I'm going to level with you here. Um, I have the phone holder because I forgot to take it off the invoice. I didn't want it. I forgot to take it off the invoice. So now I have it. Um, and it is a nice phone holder, but personally, I don't think I would feel that safe putting my phone in here because someone could just come in and like take it out. But the workaround I've found for that is that although I don't use it for my phone, what I do use it for is my electrolytes. So I mean, even if someone does try to mug me, they're not going to get my phone, but they are going to have a fantastic potassium level. So everybody wins. I will just say as well, if you are going to get any of these accessories, you do need these like tube adapter things. Again, I'll write the name of them in the description box, but there's something you need to get to attach things like the, um, the phone thing and the bottle holder. Um, so yeah, make sure you get those as well. Um, the scooter bag just slips on and the pannier bag has a Velcro strap so you can like properly tie it around and stuff. Oh, and then the thing I didn't say, um, the really cool thing about this chair is that you can pair it with an app on your phone. Um, and the two main purposes of that are one, if you're like me and you're ambulant, so you're sometimes standing up and leaving your chair in places, you can use the app on your phone to lock the chair so that nobody can just sit in it and drive off, which is genuinely a worry of mine when I'm out on a... Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, that's genuinely a worry of mine when I'm out and about, so that's great. And you can also use the app to, dri to drive the wheelchair when you're not in it. Um, and again, that will have certain benefits um, for things that I'm thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> 
girl. <laughs> so the final thing I'll mention is three limitations that I've noticed so far. I've had this chair for coming up to two months now, I believe. The first one I touched on earlier, and it's mainly a me problem, is that the chair is a little bit wider than the one I had before. Um, the turning circle is still great, but it is a little bit bigger than before. And because I'm used to getting through quite narrow spaces in my old chair, um, and my spatial awareness isn't the best at the best of times. Um, I have had some incidents with bumping into things, but like I said, that is definitely a me problem. Um, the second one, it's a little bit um, tricky to explain, but this chair is very good on different terrain, but getting from one type of terrain to another, you have to make sure that you take it as, at a right angle. I've got a few clips of this, so I'll put these in here and I'll try and show you what I mean. So to try and explain what I mean, if I'm on the pavement here, but I want to get on the grass, I couldn't just go like this and get on the grass. Sometimes you can, but what you would normally need to do is stop, turn, grass. <laughs> it can handle grass quite well it can handle uneven surfaces a lot better than the one i had before but obviously using it on the pavement is like my favorite thing for <laughs> it's so much easier um the same thing happens with the wheels getting stuck in things sometimes so like certain types of cobbles and certain like tram lines and stuff like that it can get over them really well but if you're at slightly the wrong angle you can sometimes get jammed into little spaces like that um you're never stuck like indefinitely thank god um, but yeah, something to be aware of. And then the last one, um, again, this is only a really minor thing, but I think it's worth pointing out for anybody with a chronic illness. Um, when you're going at speed in this wheelchair, as I often am, when you stop by releasing the um, joystick, the chair stops, but it almost does like this little like shrug motion. So it kind of like your body kind of goes back and forth a little bit. So let me try and show you what I mean. Dun, 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 dun there i mean if you can ignore the hair and what the wind is doing to my hair there's like a tiny little shrug um and that won't be noticeable for some people oh god i'm fighting a losing battle here <laughs> that won't be noticeable for some people but when you have a chronic illness sometimes it's little motions like that and kind of like the sensory experience that you have to be aware of so i just thought i would point that out it's not enough of an issue to rule out the positives like the positives of this chair in my experience far outweigh the negatives but like i said earlier that will be so different for everybody i hope that's given you a little bit of insight about the will c2 and what it's like to use it like i said i did find videos like this really helpful when I was researching options so yeah I hope that's been helpful and I'll be back with an outro shortly <laughs> so as you'll hopefully be able to tell my personal experience with the Will C2 so far has been a really positive one not without its challenges but I think that would be true for absolutely any mobility aid and any person there's always going to be things to problem solve and that you need to adjust to um it does feel quite life-changing for me to have this power chair especially in comparison with the old one and it just feels like it's opened up so many more doors again for me especially with regard to my work um so that's really exciting like I said I'm not trying to convince anybody to get these chairs I'm not a salesperson I'm not affiliated with them in any way um and what's right for me won't necessarily be right for you but if you are interested in purchasing this chair um, and you were thinking about that regardless and you do think it's genuinely the right option for you, um, TGA have a referral scheme and I only found out about this recently, but they said if you use the referral code REFERFRIEND, I'll leave details in the description box, apparently if you use that code while you're ordering um, you will get £150 off and I will get £150 back so I thought I will mention that just in case anybody is at that stage and they're confident it's the right one. Yeah I'm not really sure how it works because I'm assuming that you're talking to a sales advisor when you're purchasing rather than just purchasing it online but if you ask them and you tell them you've got the refer a friend discount and then I think you give them my name I don't know, something like that. Oh, who even knows? I thought I'd mention it just in case it's helpful, I don't know. But yes, anyway, thank you so much as always for watching. I really appreciate you being here. You can subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.